It was a week of privileges. I got to see quite a few people this week that I don't normally see. Amongst them, not only my oldest son, but uh, also some of my foster sons. And uh, one of my foster sons, his son. And uh, when he walked in, I recognized him immediately. I haven't seen him since he was a baby. And I said, Alexander. And he said, Omar, which means granny. And he put his arms around my neck. And he just held on. And uh, it moved me. And um, so we had a little bit of magic. And so I decided that I will put some stories into his head. If this is the last thing I do, I will make sure that this child believes in the magic of stories. And so he was looking at some of the things that I'd made. And amongst them was the necklace that I'd worn before. And there's a center uh, glass bead to it. And he says, Granny, can I have this magic crystal? And I said to him, no, you can't. That one is mine, but why don't we find you your very own magic crystal? And uh, so I have this little blue tin. And it's all grey tin. It had all grey tea in it. And in this tin, I keep an awful lot of um, semi-precious stones. And so we poured them out on the bed. But amongst these stones was a collection of glass marbles, but the flattened kind that they use for, to put on decor items. You can glue them to things, you know, but they're not worth much, but they're pretty. And he picked up every single one of them. And his dad said to him, Alexander, just one. And I said, no, he can have them all. It's okay. And so we emptied the tin and we put in all his magic crystals into the tin and then I gave him something a little Chinese symbolic well-wishing pillow that one of my Chinese adopted sons had uh, given to me long long ago but since he's grown with children of his own and lives in China he won't know that I've shared it with this grandchild and um, we put that in there and I told him the story about that and then he looked at my necklaces and he wanted one of his own and I said to him, but you can't have these because I made them for me with my kind of magic. And why don't Granny make you one of your own, your very own? And so I have some blanks, leather songs, you know, with fittings and so on. And we went and he selected a little pendant to hang from it. And it was a star. And it was the perfect opening, of course, you know, for a storyteller you just can't resist. And so I told him about stars and reaching for your dreams and um, on my desk I used to have a little clip that uh, held the saying and it said just do it don't hesitate if you believe it you will see it and so I told him that there's a magic spell on my desk and he glanced over and he looked at me and he said that one I said, yes, he can't read yet, he's, he's not old enough to read yet. And he ran across to my desk and he fetched it and he brought it to me. And, I, and he said to me, Granny, I want this magic spell. I said, you can have it. And when you find your own magic spell, you can get your uncle to write it at the back or daddy to write it at the back. And then you put it at your desk where you do your homework and you look at it every day. And when you miss Grandma, you hold on to your little star because everybody has a dream and if you see it and you believe it inside your mind I promise you you'll see it in real life too and so Alexander said goodbye to me and they were here but a few minutes but I think it's a matter of fact I know that I've plotted a dream somewhere in a little mind and I think that was a good good week especially when my oldest son said to me because he sat with him while I told him the story and he said you know Ma that's a really good bit of advice that I said thanks for if you believe it you will see it why don't you do the same just reach for those stars I try.